other than that, it's been cold and wet and rainy and just yeah. not a really nice spring weather. There, now they can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> for better or for worse. I don't know. Uh, we had snow yesterday. It's 41 degrees Fahrenheit here yesterday. It was ah, a cra- pretty day. Did you turn on your microphone? Apparently I did not. Did I not? No, I did not. Okay. You want to try that Better? again? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> she oh didn't turn gosh, on her I microphone. I have the microphone on. Didn't turn it on. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. It's been one of those days thus far. Ah. <laughs> so, T, it's been... Um, they didn't two... hear anything you said. No, not a word. Not I just word. babbled. You just... I babbled. You're like a Muppet with no voice actor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah a muppet with battleship gray hair battleship gray yeah battleship gray i was trying to come up with a, a pretty decor gray color to describe my hair and couldn't find one so battleship gray it is well people are asking about your hand oh nothing serious just um you know age, age. <laughs> <laughs> wow that was quick <laughs> Um, At this rate, I'm going to live longer than you. (laughs) (laughs) Keep pushing buttons, pal. Uh, Help. We've had miserable cold weather Mm. the last couple of days. Rain, wet, snow. I can't believe we had snow yesterday. It was just wrong. And then um, we had two days of absolutely beautiful weather. Gorgeous, sun shining, warm. And then it all went to... Heck in a handbag. Heck and in we a got hand. snow yesterday. Today is still cool. It's uh, what forty five degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. What about eight? Degrees? Actually, I think it's warmer now. Right, it's about eight degrees Celsius. The sun is out now, at least. But uh, I'm hoping it warms up. I really don't like this cold, damp weather. So now that we got that glitch first thing this morning, that glitch being me microphone. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to live this one down, I can promise you. No, no, no. <laughs> so we're going to tackle um, Pretty in Pink, which is the orchids today. And I'm being signaled by my producer <laughs> that, we, that we have giveaways. Hey, you don't want me yapping in your ear. Right? <laughs> no, I do not. Uh, we do have some giveaways for you. We always have giveaways. We have a stencil set and one of my favorite Uniball pens for one of you. And, uh, of course, we have that fabulous Stampenda stamp. This one, this is the Bee Happy stamp with these little fat-bottomed bees. I just love the stamp. Um, you can find the Stampenda stamps are on uh, Deb Antonick's website. It's paintingwithdeb.com. And uh, she's got a promotion going on for the rest of the weekend, I believe, that you can order direct from the Stampenda um, catalog. These are stamps that are brand new. You can order them through her right now. Most of the time you would have to wait till they hit stores, but n- not right now. You can order them directly from her. So if you go to her website, you will see order from Stampendus by email. Go through the catalog, pick out your favorite stamps, some fun stamps. She's also got some great prices on too. And uh, check it out because she's got some really great opportunities for you there. Plus, she also has some stocked on her website. Ships to both U.S. and Canada. And, uh, yeah, so check that out. So we, one of you has a uh, stamp and a stamp. And then I have a great little surface this week. This one is from Southern Ridge Trading. I love this. Uh, I have a piece called uh, Brown Eyed Susans. And it's, it's done on a Victorian plaque. Uh, the one that I've done it on hangs this way, but this one hangs vertically, which is fun. And so one of you is going to get that. So the retail on this surface is about eight, nine bucks. So it's a nice little price. The stamp's probably in about $12, $13 range. And then two stencils plus that pen is in that $18 range as well. So that's our giveaways for this week. Yay! And we're going to... Um, we're going to tackle Pretty in Pink, which is those pretty little pink orchids with the oh, black Oh, I and just white called paws. it Painting Pretties. Painting Pretties. But we're also going to talk about doing the sunflowers. So, we're, yeah, it is Painting Pretties. Okay. So, um, I'm about ready to get started if you are. Okay. So, 
this is the piece we're going to tackle today. The surface for this one is from Cover Distributing at cdwood.com. Uh, this one is the 6x14 framed panel. I love the surface. I just had so much fun with it. Um, all of these framed pieces that they've been producing, I'm really, really enjoying. They're fun to paint on. It's a nice surface. And I like that little framed element. They've also, I don't know if you can see it in this, but the corners have been laser cut to look like they've been mitered. So it just adds another little design element to the piece, which I really liked. So we're going to walk through all of the techniques for completing this and for this one. Now, these are not a difficult paint. Um, so we're going to walk through all of the steps so that you can see how this is done. And um, hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a full understanding of how to get from this point where it's just black uh, to a finished piece. So I think we're going to have a little bit of fun doing this. So I've prepped actually the back of my finished pieces because I don't have any more of these surfaces and I really liked that shape. So um, to start with, you're going to start with a black base coat. And it's pretty straightforward. You don't have to worry about getting it utterly perfect. If there's brush marks in it, that's okay. If there's, you know, if it's an imperfect base coat, that's fine. Don't worry about getting it absolutely perfect because the finish for this one it has a distressed look anyway. It's going to look worn. It's going to look aged. And so you're going to start with doing that stamped element in the back over that black background. And I have misplaced my other board. Doesn't matter. I don't know. How do I ever do anything? Um, I need, oh my goodness, I couldn't find my butt with both hands today. So I have my brayer, my stamps, and a little bit of warm white. And I'm going to use a stamp technique just using paint for this. I'm using white. Now, if any of you have painted any of my uh, black florals, any of the French florals, it's the same technique. It's so simple. So you're going to choose your favorite script stamps. And of course, you know which mine are. I love this grunge stamp. This is one of my favorites. I love it. Uh, it comes with a little postage. Um, stamp, a cancellation stamp, and then there's Vintage Note, which is another of my favorites. And you're going to take that white paint on your mini brayer, and this is how you load this stamp. You just simply roll the paint on with that little mini brayer. And then once you have it on, you're going to stamp randomly around your piece just to get a little of that text in. And then you're going to do the same thing with some of the other design elements, like this canceled postage stamp. I like popping one or two of those in. The grunge stamp comes with this fabulous little swirly bit, so I'm going to do the same thing to this one. I just like it, like so, just to create a little background interest so that you have something going on besides just script or just black space. So, and that's going to create all of our background texture. And then once that is done and dry, you're going to sand it really lightly, just enough to distress that lettering so that you don't have this solid, bright white. We want to wear it down a little bit, which is what I've done in the background here. Once you have that done, you're going to put a wash of thin dish faultum over all of it. And all that does is knock that bright white out and subdues it a little bit and pushes it more towards the background. And so that part is super easy. So now I have this taped off because I don't have a frame to go on this like this. <laughs> so I've taped it off <laughs> so that we can treat this like the frame. And it's really simple. Ooh. Can you show them how to make it look like there's a frame there? I'm going to. <gasps> awesome. So I've taped this off. Now I wanted to show you a trick um, for taping off an area. I wanted to get a nice crisp border all the way around the outside. And there is a trick for getting these nice sharp corners when you're using tape. And this is it. You need a good palette knife. 
and you're going to line the edge of that palette knife up with the edge of this tape and press it down and pull your tape back. So essentially, I'm using the edge of that blade to create a nice sharp corner on my tape. I can see this taking a few tries to get right. <laughs> um, well, actually, it goes fairly quickly. You just make sure that you keep it firmly in place. You can even do it slowly, but after a while, you get used to doing it quick. But it'll give you a nice sharp edge, like so. So you get these nice clean corners. Now, I did this for the purpose of stenciling on this border, so if you don't have the framed panel, you can do this on a board that is not framed. So there we go. We have a nice taped off border, and it's ready for our stenciling. So I'm going to set this one aside for a moment. I'm going to go grab a stencil brush because I need one. So the stencil that I'm using for this border is the quarter inch check. I love this stencil. And I'm going to take my stencil so that the edge of that line, the edge of that check comes right to the edge of my framed panel and then I'm going to tape it into place. Since I just tore a whole bunch of tape off, that's what I'm going to use. So now I have this in place and I'm going to stencil just with a little bit of warm white. And that brush should be almost dry. We don't want a ton of paint on it. Because the more paint we put on, the more we have to take off. <laughs> I've missed so many Saturdays lately. Glad to make the, make the live. It's not the same watching it later. <laughs> you miss all the uh, snafus. Me not turning my mic on. I've <laughs> <laughs> always so, wondered how to create that tape off corner that taped off corner yeah. oh, okay. to get that nice sharp edge that's how you do it so I've got my first stencil in and again I'm not looking for a fully opaque finish on this stencil I just want to get some on because we're going to distress this anyway there's no point. So now I have my first corner on. Look at that. See how nice and clean and straight it is? So now I'm going to line it up and move it up. So you just secure it back into place so that those checks are all nicely fitted within the stencil. And you do it again. Now it's inevitable that you're going to get to a corner and realize that your images don't line up. It's inevitable. Don't worry about it. There are ways to make that less noticeable. <laughs> now, we're, now we're just wondering what you were saying the entire time. <laughs> I was just babbling about the weather. Yeah, we were talking about weather. Uh, Miss Dot. Miss Dot's... Um, new poncho they, they jury rigged a poncho for her so she could go out in the rain she does not like being wet yeah so we're trying to figure out ways to keep her dry outside and it was cut pretty up funny. a poncho they created a poncho almost a tent to go over top of her wheelchair which is pretty funny so uh see it seems you made renee's day with the mic thing <laughs> Oh, it just gives a ammo for later. That's oh, yeah. <laughs> Getting ready to head on a road trip to pick up a pig. A pig? Hope my feed doesn't die out. I can't imagine two weekends in a row missing my favorite show. <laughs> oh, that's where Jessica's been. Oh, she's been on the road. We missed you last weekend. Jessica Killerin, right? Yeah. She was missed. We've gotten so used to seeing her name in the feed that, yeah. <laughs> that when it wasn't there... It wasn't there Saturday, and we made mention of you. Yeah. We made mention of you, Jessica. Yeah. Oh, and there's Miss Karen Jones. Miss Karen. troublemaker herself. Are these patterns on your site yet? Yes, they are. Both of them are. And don't forget, if you look at the top of the first page of the website... There is a little stay safe coupon code, so you save you a few pennies. 
I'm not supposed to tell. Oh, but it's a super secret coupon code. <laughs> no, it's not so super secret. Well, sure it is. It's only my peeps know about it. Oh, your peeps? My your peeps. homies? My homies, my <laughs> tribe. <laughs> tribe. <laughs> Why are all frames black and white? All frames in black and white. But um, there's actually a reason for that. I really, really liked that sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I like that high contrast. What size is the board? The board is 6 by 14. 6 by 14. Where can I buy the Brayer? Oh. The uh, Brayer. Uh, Sandy. Miss Sandy has those on her website, yeah. sandymcteerdesigns.com. I got she you in here somewhere, them. Sandy. Yes, I do. There you are. Miss Sandy is teaching um, today the SDP retreat today, which was really cool. Her and I taught um, journal pages last night. That was a lot of fun. We had a great time. See, and I completely hooped this. What did you do? Oh, it's all crooked. You can fix it. Uh, it's, you know what? We can make it so it doesn't matter. Miss Deb Pels, good afternoon. <laughs> so I'm going to quickly finish this out. I, I've actually made a... <laughs> I was so shocked you were painting these this weekend. Aren't you teaching tonight? I am teaching tomorrow. <laughs> Sandy is teaching today. I'm teaching tomorrow. Technically, I'm... we weren't supposed to do this at all. Yeah, well, we weren't going to, but... Um, Timing uh, actually worked in our favor, so uh, here we are. Ta-da! I didn't think anybody would mind. <laughs> I have to say I'm definitely a groupie or a member of the tribe. Okay. <laughs> groupie? A groupie. Yeah, that's a good word. Uh, Miss Sandy's um, creative group opened up. Uh, this week and, and it's open until Monday so if you haven't looked at um, becoming part of her creative group uh, the OG group go and check it out you go check it on her website um, she's got an awesome creative organization going so much content so many great ideas so much great instruction she's absolutely amazing I'm so lucky that I get to work with her on the, on a regular basis um, especially with deck work. Um, we have a tendency to feed off of each other when we're together. So it, we create a lot of creative <laughs> mayhem <laughs> when we're at deck work. Call it a creative avalanche. Yep. It just gets worse and worse and worse. <laughs> <laughs> or better, depending or better. on how you look at it. <laughs> uh, so I've got my checkerboard all the way around the outside. So now we have to distress this. And I'm going to, I'm just using a fine sanding sponge. Now I am sanding in one direction only. I don't, don't recommend sanding, you know, all willy nilly. Do things in an order. All so, willy. <laughs> willy nilly. I don't like it when people accuse me of lollygagging when I'm clearly. <laughs> so. I'm sanding it and I'm heavily distressing this. I'm looking for those pits and scratches in that paint. We want to subdue these quite a bit. I really don't want a really harsh contrast. Are you going to paint another one so there is a set of three? I was thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a... Cupboard Distributing actually got my order. I ordered six more of these surfaces. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I really liked it. I like how they look, and I think they'd make a great set to have, you know. I just, I like the surface. So once you've got those distressed, then you're going to pay a little attention to the edges and the corners. Okay. I um. like wearing away some of that paint along the edges. Get like that distress so. back. And don't be shy. You can do a little or you can do a lot. It's entirely up to you. It depends on what your tastes lean to. Uh, well, Debbie, that's an easy question that I can answer. Hand sanitizer. What do I clean my stencils with? Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, what product do you use to clean your stencils with? <laughs> hand sanitizer. Hand Anything sanitizer. with a uh, alcohol base. Yeah, I use hand sanitizer. Rubbing alcohol works too, but hand sanitizer is the easiest one to get these days. <laughs> I wonder why. Can't imagine. Are you so, going to? Oh, ah, I missed it. It's moving. Can you show us how to manage the checks that don't match up in the corners? Oh, okay. Well, you might have to have a close look here. This is how I managed it. I'm good at that. Because I did exactly that. I completely hooped this. You notice up here in this corner, I've got half of a check mark, and then I've got like an eighth of a check mark, and it gets narrower and narrow until the check marks all line up down this edge. I hooped this corner big time over here. So if I go into this corner and line up my stencil, everything fits. I line up on this corner, everything fits. I come down to this corner. Can't see it. And everything fits except it's not straight. Right? Same here. So if you look at it, everything fits the way it's supposed to. So where I realized that I wasn't going to get a really clean fit. I actually moved the stencil a little bit to one side. So the gap between a couple of these places up here is a little wider than it should have been. Mm -hmm. But because the pattern is fairly consistent and because there's so much of it, it sort of falls into the background. Somebody will probably pick this up at some point and go, that's not straight. <laughs> Like I did. I saw it right away because it was driving me nuts. I don't like it when things aren't straight. But it falls into the pattern, so it becomes less noticeable. All I did was expand that gap. If you look here, there's almost a perfect square in between these four white checks. And you come down here, well, that square, it might be perfect, but it's considerably larger than this. And that's because I left a little bit of a gap. I pulled the stencil a little further than I should have. So yeah, you can hide a lot of sins, especially with a check. The biggest one you have to watch for though is to making sure that things are straight up and down, which was what happened in this corner. So at this point, I'm going to age this. And that means... <laughs> <laughs> so they're asking for sweet peas. For the third one. Ooh, that'd be pretty. Uh, bleeding hearts. Oh, ble oh. You haven't done bleeding hearts. I haven't done bleeding hearts. That would be a pretty one. Yeah. Notice you... they're all pink. <laughs> what is with pink? I don't know. So yeah. I've got a little bit of a schvaltum on my brush. And I'm just going to put a slip slap float. Nothing neat and tidy. All around the outside edge. And yes, we're going to let some of that asphaltum just bleed out over the rest of it. It's not a perfect float. Don't want it to be perfect. Get the so, palette thing there. I'm just pulling a little bit of color over top of that check and all the way around. And then I'm going to dry it real fast. That's a waste of vodka. <laughs> Alcohol abuse. Yeah. When I first learned to clean stencils, I used vodka. <gasps> no. <laughs> what will you put in your martini? <laughs> <laughs> what goes in the martini? <laughs> That's just straight up gin and vermouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My mother does not like gin. Oh, I can't even stand the smell of it. I don't know how she is about vermouth, though. I don't care for it either. No? No. Yeah. So... I just take that float to the inside edge as well. Have you ever designed a project with Texas blue bonnets? No, I haven't, but what a great idea. I'm trying to get her away from flowers. <laughs> I'm trying. That's and you okay. guys aren't helping. <laughs> he's, However, he's excited about next Saturday. Bob gets a self-portrait. <laughs> Bob gets. <a> <laughs> He's excited because. Is Bob sleeping in this morning? I have Bob in my hand. Bob, you know, it's kind of they have a really strange relationship. These two. 
There's Bob. There's Bob. So I put a <laughs> float of that asphaltum around the inside edge, right up against that tape. And I'm going to dry this as well, and then we're going to remove it. <laughs> Vodka is for the mouth. <laughs> When you have so many other options, right? <laughs> iris. I've done an iris. Uh, bleeding hearts, blue bonnets. Bleeding hearts. I'd really, that would be so pretty. Didn't, who was it? I, like I the think idea it was of... Winnipeg. Along Rouge Road, there was a house that had a fence and it had a bunch of vines all over it. And they always had bleeding hearts growing off of it. Yeah, it would, they had massive bleeding hearts. Yeah. So now I'm going to take off this tape and you'll notice how I'm doing it. I'm using the edge of my palette knife to lift that corner up. And then I'm going to pull my tape back and I pull it back at a 45 degree angle so that it's as close to the surface as I can get. The reason I do it that way instead of pulling it straight up is so that it doesn't pull the paint off. You'll get a much cleaner edge And you don't run the risk of tearing your paint off. So again, 45 degree <laughs> angle. Uh, I can see how that could be taken out of context if the, nobody understood the conversation. <laughs> I have Bob in my hand. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> so there is our distressed border just like on the framed piece. Now I tend to get a little sand happy when I'm doing this type of thing because I really like a more heavily distressed finish. So mine tends to get a lot of that, you know, I go right to the wood. I get through that paint and right to the wood. I really like seeing that little extra and it breaks up any little flaws, which I really like. So that is why. So we have our border in place. And now we have this portion in the center that we have to contend with. All of that stamped area. And this is where I thin out that asphaltum. And it's just a wash. It's not a float. I'm just using a little thin dish asphaltum on a brush and just go right over all of that white. Amaryllis? Amaryllis. Amaryllis. I've done Emeralds before. Uh, morning Glories? I've done Morning Glories too. I love Morning Glories. Palm trees and flamingos. <laughs> I don't do flamingos. Why not? I don't know. I just, I just don't. So many other people do them so much better than I would. So. White daisies? I love white daisies. I actually paint daisies quite a bit because I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with them. Daisies are one of my favorite flowers. They're just... A happy flower. We do need to see how you do gardenias first. I just did a gardenia. Oh, I haven't taught that one yet, have I? No, you haven't taught that one. Oh my goodness. When does gardenia? Yeah, we'll have to do that. Yeah, you didn't. You did peony. You did the lilacs and the hibiscus. You haven't done the. So I haven't done the the gardenia. Okay, so we'll have to do that one. So after Bob, we're doing gardenia. <laughs> Hey, now we're two weeks ahead. Yeah. <laughs> There's a shocker for you. <laughs> wow. How did we go from not ready today to being two weeks ahead? <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> oh, it's because we have actual audience participation. Is that what it is? I think that's yeah. what it is. When we're left to our own device, we don't get anything done. <laughs> I just I've had an opportunity to paint the last couple of weeks, so I've been I've been having some fun. I don't often get a chance to paint these days. Just to sit and paint or to design something, I think. Because I've been painting, I just haven't been designing, so So I'm gonna get this line drawing on. Zombie cookies first. Zombie cookie. Yeah. Can I show them the piece? Yeah, you can show them the piece. The zombie cookie is just, I love it. I just, <laughs> yeah, we're going to show it. I just think it's fun. We're going to show it. Okay, are you ready? I think this is a hoot. 
This is the zombie cookies. I just think <laughs> look it's at a Bob. Hoot. Look at Bob. Yep, Bob. I, th I this one was so much fun because we sat here and laughed like idiots. Yeah. Creating this thing. I mean, I just didn't do this I'm by myself. I'm glad you took the pupils away. I did take the pupils away because that was almost too creepy. But uh, yeah, and I had to have more skulls. Yeah. Sorry, but I did. I just didn't want to make them too um, obvious, so they've been distressed. That's Bob. But that's Bob. So this is the zombie Come cookies on. that we're going to be doing. Gotta zoom in on Bob. I just, it's just a hoot and a half. I, we had such a giggle putting this one together because Renee had a lot of input in this one. Uh, the bite out of the tombstone. The bite out of the tombstone cookie. <laughs> um, I had the moon back there. He said it needed a bat or something hanging from the tree. Or, I said it needed to be yeah, flying. A bat or a witch or something. It going needed at... something back there. So we have a bat. Yeah. And yeah, we had a lot of fun putting this one together. But yeah, that the... is our zombie cookies for next yeah, week. Cookies. And uh, the pattern is almost finished. So it'll be up probably the beginning of next week. So I, I just... I think it's a hoot. We had way too many giggles doing this one. <laughs> uh, love it. So cool. That's cute. That's adorable. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> I don't often do anything for Halloween. This one, I just, I had a lot of fun with. Absolutely love that. The cracked teacup. Yeah. That was Renee's idea. He told me that it needed to be cracked. Well, yeah. It, you can't have zombies in there and be, <laughs> you know... You, when you think zombie, you don't think, like, picturesque model. No. <laughs> you think of something missing parts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm missing my graphite paper. Zombie with perfect skin. Speaking of missing parts. <laughs> I had a piece of white graphite. Or... Did you? <sighs> I did. It's right here. Thank you. <laughs> nervous some people's children what <laughs> i'm your child i know <laughs> the nerve <laughs> so tracing on i i mean you guys know that i i do everything with these bloody pens so you need to get this vase on the vase on this one just gets base coated warm white And now you get to see the high-tech method I use for tracing and transferring my designs. That's the great part about, <laughs> about this is, though it is the end of April, mm -hmm. very end of April, or is it March? Is it March? Now? It's April. Hello. Wow, I'm going back in time. Yeah. <laughs> it's April. No, it's May. <laughs> yes, it's today's May, May 1st. 1st. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. I need coffee. You need something. Uh, drugs. I don't think those will help. No. <laughs> <laughs> All the drugs. Uh, it, where was he going with this? I have no idea. I lost my train of thought. Maybe I should stop doing drugs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, per, uh, the great thing about this. The great thing about this is we. It's, yeah, everybody's saying it's May first. Thanks. <laughs> I caught on. <laughs> um, it's May first, and we've done Christmas stuff a couple of weeks ago. Yep. We've done spring stuff. We've done summer stuff. We've, so we were due for a Halloween stuff. Oh yeah, we're due, we're due for a Halloween thing. I want that skull stencil. What skull stencil? <laughs> oh, on the border. It's not a stencil. Yeah. Not a... St There's a stencil idea for you. Oh, yeah. No. I think it'd sell. It's too difficult. We've tried to do it before, especially for something that small. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, but... Um, larger skull stencils work. Larger skull stencils we can do. But. So I'm, this is, is a, like I said, this is about as high tech as I get when it comes to tracing and transferring things on. And I really don't worry too much about getting the accuracy on some of this because I'm going to be doing a sketchy line around it anyway. So as long as I get the general shape in 
I'm fine with it. Are you suggesting I take morphine? Nope. No. No, 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 no. I refused opioids when I got my knee surgery. <laughs> <laughs> and when they told me I wasn't getting the knee surgery until I took an opioid. Yeah, no. Then things changed. Yeah. Hell no. Oh, maybe I should. I'm going to do your just tracing right now. I am. I'm just scuffing this along. I'm almost done anyway. Um, I use a white graphite to transfer this on. I don't worry about any of the finer details in it because, quite honestly, they don't really matter. They're, most of those are sketched in after the fact anyway. So I don't really worry too much about it. I'm also not going to draw that bumblebee on because, um, well, i got a base coat right over it, and I'm not base coating around them. So I am going to pull this. Oh, my gosh, it's stuck. There we go. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish tracing this out. Nope, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Ta-da! So we have our line drawing in place. Now I need to send that background back a little bit further. So we're going to do that with a little bit of lamp black because our background is no longer just black. So I'm going to use a little bit of lamp black for this. And get a brush wet. Now I'm working with a faux squirrel. This is a three-eighths angle. I'm going to get my Joe Sonia's fast drying glaze out. I love this stuff. It's starting to crop up. You can find it in Dick Blick and Country Bear has it and Joe Sonia has it. So it's it's popping up all over the place, which is great. It's a little more available. Um, oh yeah, great news today. I meant to tell you guys this. Uh, Cupboard Distributing got a shipment of deco art paint in. So if you're looking for colors, um, they may just have the, have what you're looking for, so don't forget to check them out. Um, there's a couple of the Decorate distributors and the retailers that are have been getting paint, so don't panic. There is some out there, and it is coming. So I'm going to float around my line drawing with a simple float. Don't get too hog wild with it. It doesn't need to be too strong. But all we're doing is just knocking some of that white back a little bit further and defining the edges of these flowers. So it's just a weak float, nothing too much. And just pay a little attention to a few of the more prominent spaces in these flowers. You don't have to go everywhere, but just some of those more prominent spaces. And all this does is make these flowers pop forward just a little bit. And you do this for the orchids as well, the sunflowers. It's just going to help you define these flowers better. And it's going to save you a little work on the other end. So these little areas underneath the flower in here is a good place too. Add that shadow. It's going to knock some of those petals forward and keep that background back. It'll help you define these flowers nicely. And don't forget, pull a little shadow around that vase as well. It's going to pop that shape forward And it isn't going to be all that dramatic until we start adding color to this. And then you're really going to see the contrast. Which is was the sole purpose behind this design. Was to work with a minimal color palette and use that black and white to best advantage. I like that high contrast. Working that black background, the various black and white patterns. And using the black and the white as the main portion of this design. There we go. I think that's enough. 
Now, somebody had asked about how we could make this frame appear to be more than just painted onto that surface, and there is a trick to that. I'm going to dry this real quick, and then I'll show you. We need to create a highlight side, and just this design already has a highlight side. The highlight side is over here on the left, which means that this right side on this line is going to be our highlight side for that frame. And so this is how we're going to do that. We'll dry this. That famous painter's tape. I love this blue painter's tape. So I want a nice straight line on the edge of this frame. So I'm going to bring my tape in and I'm going to come away from the edge of it by a very narrow amount. I only want about an eighth of an inch or less. And I'm going to do the same thing on the frame side and I'm going to come right to the edge of that check like so. I want that thin, narrow line right there. Now, here is where this piece stops. I want to make sure that I have it on that line so that it stops in the right place. Oops. I'm taping off that board. There we go. And I'm going to do the same thing along the bottom just so that I'm not creating more of an issue. And then I'm going to take a small stencil brush and a very tiny amount of that warm white. I want the brush almost dry. And I'm going to dry brush all the way along there. Boom. Just like so. Why do you do it now instead of after the flowers are painted? Um, because I'm going to go into another one and I just figured since I'm, I'm here, I might as well do it. Wow. You can do this at any time. You can do it at the end. You could do it at the beginning. I uh, just figured we'd do it now. So, now that I've got that in there, I'm uh, going to remove my tape. Remember, peeling it back, 45 degree angle. There is my highlight side. Now you could do this with a liner brush. I just wanted to keep it really nice and straight because it is a frame. And I'm going to do the same thing right here along the bottom. And it is not going to go all the way across. Well, I best go give Dot her pizza bone. Oh, Dot's getting a pizza bone. Renee's having pizza for lunch. Dot likes the pizza bones. Well, I already ate one slice and I walked past her. Oh. <laughs> she didn't growl at you? Pizza bone. So there we have a highlight along the bottom. And I kind of let it run out. You notice I just I didn't take it. She's saying thank you. I didn't take it all the way down. I just sort of let that color run out so it's brightest next to that wall. You do the same thing at the top. She wanted that pizza bone. I guess so. So the only thing that you would do from this point is you're going to put a black line in here. Nice sharp dark line. And that will give you that look. And you can also take that white stencil brush, that brush with a little bit of the white in it, and highlight the edge of this just a little. And that will help give you that sort of inset look. So that is how you do that. So we have this. So which of us? I'm going to do, this one's already base coated, so let's talk about this one. And then we'll paint daisies later. Daisies? You mean sunflowers? Sunflowers, daisies, they're daisies pattern is called sunny day daisies so I thought there were sunflowers no they're not they're daisies they're actually brown-eyed Susan yellow daisies 
Okay, now I'm confused. <laughs> Help! So I'm going to put a second coat of warm white on these on this stripe here. It doesn't really need it. I just wanted it a bit more opaque. <laughs> oh, so it's gone from Tracy, Renee, and to Bob. And to Bob, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, one of the fun things about painting things in black and white is that you've got a lot of opportunity to fix little boo-boos and goose that you might make. Just like goofs and boo-boos will show up like crazy when you're working at such a high contrast color palette um, because they're such a high contrast color palette. But it also gives you plenty of opportunity to fix them. And so I'm just going to quickly put a little more white on here. And then we're going to talk about stenciling on this and then creating that curvature. The two things about this design um, lend you the illusion that this is a dimensional surface and one of them is the angle of these stripes is that curvature that we've put into the stripes it implies the curve in that vase and then the other thing is putting the shadows and the highlights in the right place that is also going to help us develop this shape really nicely but I need to get some white on here because I'm not happy with that base coat No. No. Not thought, opaque enough? It wasn't quite opaque enough. So don't mind me while I put in another quick coat of white. What are the people saying? They're probably snoring watching me base coat. <laughs> <laughs> I love zombie cookies. Don't we all? What's not to love? What's not to love about zombie cookies? I mean, Bob's here. Yep. We can't be derogatory towards Bob. We're an inclusive society. <laughs> Zombies count. Zombies are people too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or cookies in this matter. <laughs> or cookies. <laughs> I don't discriminate against cookies. No, they're all good. They're all good. Uh, prune, never, prune never, cookies. What yeah. is it? Prune cookies. Prune cookies? Prune it's cookies. It's a guy on TikTok that does the like... 19 the, like, oh the the one that does the uh, the vintage recipes yeah the vintage recipes like the depression era recipes yeah. one of them was d prune cookies or prune cake or something like that yeah yeah the other one was sauerkraut cake and uh, now that one i have never heard of yeah apparently it was quite popular in germany oh, I, duh. Duh. <laughs> in 1948 you quite popular apparently the sauerkraut is there just for texture. It's supposed to make it feel like there's coconut in it. Okay. You barely taste it. Okay. Yeah, I was like... You. I, in my mind, I kind of want to try it, but at the same time, I like sauerkraut. Uh, I can't quite But it has to around. be on meat. Ugh. Oh, I love sauerkraut. I yeah. do too. Sauerkraut's got to go on a nice... Bratwurst. Okay, so I've got enough weight on there, I think. That'll they do. were people. They were people. <laughs> <laughs> they were people. They're what's left of people. <laughs> Zombies are... They're people, too. Zombies no, they were people. people. <laughs> That's funny. Ew, I don't like coconut either. Ah... Uh not a fan i don't it can be an overpowering flavor oh, yeah it can be i'm just not a fan i'll i'll eat it it's it just can't be the main it's flavor. nice but it just i don't know it can't be the main flavor no it's just it's too much okay i am batting a thousand today where's my polka dot stencil how about Speaking a reuben which, sandwich absolutely oh, <laughs> yes where's my basket of stencils right here <laughs> Basket O stencils. Yeah. Ta da. Oh, yeah. I was uh, going to mention mm. this today. Nothing like a good Reuben. Oh, I love a Reuben, especially a good, good pumpernickel. Here. Thank you much. Okay, so I wanted my teeny tiny poker dot stencil. And so, why I've got your attention. Um, for some of you that have been getting your orders, you may have noticed 
that we tuck in these little um, these little three by threes. We've had quite a variety of these. So anytime you place an order that's got stencils or printed patterns or whatnot in it, um, we usually tuck one of these in with your order. And right now, the one that is um, going out is this one. It's that little sunflower stencil. So those are going out and uh, we're going to have a new one um, for summer and then probably another one for fall. I know we have a maple leaf one somewhere that we did for fall um, some time ago, but we have a bunny and we've done the little hearts for Valentine's Day and we did the, what is it, shamrock for um, for February with snowflakes for December, go figure. Um, a couple of years ago, I did the Fleur de Lis for Mardi Gras. I can barely see it. Uh, so these are really a lot of fun, these little mini stencils. They can be used for journaling. They can be used for a variety of things. So yeah. just so you know that anytime you place an order on our website, we try to tuck one of these little doodads in to your shipment. Um, if you already have the same design that you've gotten in a previous order, um, feel free to share with a friend. That's what they're for. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yeah, I really like those coming up with those um, fun little stencils to pop into people's orders with our thanks because we really do appreciate you guys. You are awesome. Hard to get pumpernickel. Uh, usually. Good pumpernickel. <laughs> hard to get pumpernickel. Oh, that's a good substitute for Reuben. You can use whole wheat. Yeah. It's not good, the same. Good German rye bread would be good too. Good German rye German bread. bread. Um. <laughs> I'm more of a preference for sourdough. <gasps> Love sourdough. A good sourdough Reuben, really good. Yeah. Uh, Love sauerkraut. H hate coconut. <laughs> okay. Uh, the thought of sauerkraut in a chuck in cocky rolls my stomach as much. Oh, as... Yeah, some people just do. Nope. Okay. Uh, the thought of bacon in my ice cream. That is delicious, actually. Yeah. Bacon in ice cream is delicious. So we're going to add little one-eighth polka dots to our vase. So now the nice part is, is that one, your background is black and so are your stripes. So you can go right over everything. Then again, I also like chocolate covered bacon. Yeah. I like candied bacon. That's good too. Uh... So I'm working this, I'm just using a little bit of lamp black. And I'm working in a circular fashion. Change directions frequently. I think that's the one eighth polka dot. Yes, it is. M two twenty one. M two twenty one. I like a marble rye bread for <gasps> my Rubens. Yum. Yeah, that would be good. So that one eighth goes on all of your. <laughs> you doing rooms. the food thing again? I know he's terrible. He just. <laughs> I like food. Yeah. I like food. We know. <laughs> And I like experimenting with food. Know that too. Well, I'm always up for trying something different, new, or uh, unusual. A, a typically odd combo. Yeah. He's easy to feed, I will tell you that. <laughs> Step on his foot and his mouth opens. Human garburator. There we go. So I've got black poker dots. Ta-da! Ooh, I had too much paint. <laughs> oh, doctor moved me to keto. Oh, keto diet. All this talk about bread is making my mouth water. <gasps> right, you can't have carbs. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you you can have carbs, but it's selected carbs. So there we have it. I've got my polka dots on my white stripes. The fun part about doing this is that you don't really have to be too careful with them because everything's black. So you can put them on. Sitting here Did eating do? chili. I made chili the other night. It was just yummy. There we go. So I have little one-eighth polka dots all over everything. Polka dots? Polka dots. I thought it was polka. Polka, poker, polka dots. Poker dots. So I'm going to draw. 
Nobody can give me a straight answer on what, what, what it is. Is it polka dots? It's Pol polka dots. P-O-L-K-A. Yeah. Love the polka dots on the stripes. I like the, I like the polka dots. I don't know what it is about polka dots on a black and white, but I don't know. Oh. Mm. So I'm going to, now I'm going to add a shadow to this vase. And I'm going to go all the way down on this outside edge of the polka dots, right there. A maple bar with bacon on top. Mmm. Mmm. That would be good. So essentially, I'm going to put a float of asphaltum on both sides of these stripes. So one on the left and one on the right. Why don't I start a YouTube show on food? Because there's a lot of those. And definitely from people who work in that profession to begin with. <laughs> I have never worked in the food industry, though it doesn't mean I can't do it. <laughs> Just there's people where or I actually take their opinions over my own. <laughs> <laughs> like cooking with Babish. Yeah. Or Maddie Matheson. I love Maddie. <laughs> Maddie's so much fun. He's hilarious. So I've got my asphaltum on one side of each of these stripes, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side because I want a lighter value towards the center of the stripe. Ah, uh, we would get to see you. <laughs> There's nothing to the madness. Uh, what if I only showed the food? Ah. <laughs> uh? I can be pretty slick that way. So I'm going to dry this, and then I'm going to I'm going to shade the bottom. So we want the bottom of this to curve under a little bit. We want to create a little bit more dimension. So I think I'm going to have to zoom in for that. We're going to put another shadow at the bottom of this boss. Don't move it too much. Thank you. And that's going to the darkest value towards the bottom. I'm coming right across the bottom and up the side like so. I'm going to let that dry, but I'm going to take that same idea and I'm going to come up here towards the neck. <laughs> and I'm going to have a float right under that line. There is a line there that creates that lip in the vase. So we're going to put a float in there. And then I want to deepen this float on the neck on both sides. like that. And now that this one is dry, I'm going to come back down to the bottom and I'm going to deepen it. We want that darkest value at the very bottom of that vase. For me, it, I had it. Oh, sorry. So that it creates that curve so that it's curving underneath. Right. I can zoom out. You can zoom out now. If Renee had a food YouTube show, he would have to show his face, and we all know that ain't going to happen. <laughs> Just your hands in the food and Bob. And Bob. Yeah. So I'm going to put a little float of asphaltum underneath that butterfly because I want to create a shadow there. I'm going to dry this real quick and I want to deepen it one more time. So technically by the time you're done this vase isn't really black and white. It's various shades of asphaltum, but it does read as being black and white. So I'm going to deepen this a little bit more down here. And I'm going to deepen that shadow underneath there just a little bit. Now, the fun part about this is because this is your impact point right here. That portion of the vase that sticks out the furthest is your impact point. And I want to put my brightest highlight right about here, on here. 
and I'm going to do that with my mezzaluna. I'm using a dry brush for this. This is a Dynasty mezzaluna. And I'm using a little bit of warm white. Now my brush needs to be almost dry for this. So I brush it out on my palette and then I blot it on my surface. And I'm going to pull this in the same curve. So you see the curve in that stripe? You're going to pull that curve. So there is our impact point and I'm following that curve. So this one is almost straight up and down. This one curves that way, and this one curves a little sharper. And then I'm gonna pick up a little more paint, blend it well, blot, and I come back to that same place where I started, only this time it's a little bit smaller and I'm isolating it to one location. And then I'm going to walk it out and again, I'm keeping it a little smaller. Instead of pulling it all the way down, like I did with that first set, this one is a little more abbreviated. What size mezzaluna? This one is a large. Large. And I'm going to let that dry. And I'm going to do this again. Reload. Blot the brush. And this is no. where you put that impact point in. I want an almost opaque, almost opaque stroke right there. Just had chicken salad with cranberry and walnuts. Mm. Ooh, that sounds good. So there is our highlight on our curved box. Bang! Now you can put one final stroke in. I usually do that with a round or a small filbert. It's just a small stroke to put that final little opaque highlight which is your light impact point and it's just there one quick little stroke that's it and there is your vase this is a simple technique for painting that vase hot trash zombie cooking what <laughs> that's what i'd call my show <laughs> hot trash zombie cooking why would i call it hot trash <laughs> it doesn't sound appealing at all <laughs> <laughs> hot <laughs> trash zombie cooking be more like the zombie doing the cooking mind you pig's brain is pretty good you never had I, a boil I, I have had pig's yeah. brain yes. oh of course you had I know dad would throw up at the side of it yeah. Dominic wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot bowl no me? Yeah. Then again, Dominic wouldn't touch most people with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> yeah. My daughter was painting her shoes with different shades of brown. One was asphaltum. Uh -huh. I was like, no way, that one is like gold. is awful that I couldn't <laughs> even share the paint with her. Uh, it's horrible. <laughs> it's terrible. But certain colors right now are, I, I kid you not, they are like gold if you're a painter. <laughs> and for That's me, a horrible his, name. It sounds, his food sounds yummy. <laughs> Hot trash. I could do a cooking show where I just called it all the titles of the recipe make it sound disgusting, but everything yeah. in it is delicious. That would be funny. <laughs> I'm not eating that. Oh, that looks good. <laughs> so these orchids, they're all painted the same way. I mean, this one actually works up very quickly. Um, I have my base coat on here for these orchids. Same color for that little butterfly down there. So the orchids are so simple to paint. Are you upside down? I are upside down. Hello. No judging. <laughs> no judging. So the color that I'm going to shade these with. Who wants to eat a millionaire? Okay. Uh, that's probably not a good one. PG rating. PG rating. <laughs> we'll keep that PG rating. So we're going to walk through painting this 
little pink orchid up top here. The color that I shade these with is Berry Cobbler, which is this, I love this color. I don't know why I've never used it before. Well, mainly because I don't usually paint pink, but this is a great shading color for pinks. Is this berry cobbler. And the other thing that I have found myself doing lately is using a mop brush or a deer foot, which I don't ordinarily do either, but I've found myself doing it. Um, so I'm going to float the shading on these orchids with that berry cobbler. Now I have a good load of my Joe Sonia's in there and all of these petals get a shadow with that berry cobbler. This is something I have never really done a lot of, but I'm just diffusing the edge of that float with my, in my case, I'm using a very soft deer foot. Most people would use a mop, but I like the deer foot for this. Uh, have you tried taking glucosamine for your joints? Yes, I take glucosamine every day. It's Helps ish. Ish, yeah. Ish. It's not enough. It's enough. Uh, what's the base coat color for the flowers? Petal pink. Petal pink. It is a nice bright pink. So the shading color for your little orchids here is that very cobbler. Now I very rarely use a color full strength, so oh. I blended this out quite a bit and soften that shadow. This weather is kicking my knees butt. <laughs> It's humid. It is. It's very humid. Never mind the fact that we got snow and rain in the same day. Snow, rain, and obscene humidity. <laughs> so there is my shadow. Now I take that shadow down into the center of that little orchid there. And this is where I want that color of the darkest, as closest to the center. And then just sort of block that out a little bit. There we go. A mop brush from Tracy? I know I don't often use one, but there it is. I'm actually using a really soft, this is a one half Dynasty Deerfoot. It's a very soft one. Now I like to go back in and deepen those shadows a little bit, particularly where the flowers overlap. And then just give them a light. So there is your shading for those petals. And so now we have to go into the center on this orchid. You're calling for a chance of thunder showers this afternoon for Alberta. Burr. Wherever. What, what's this place called in Karen's? Oh, she's out in. Um, Red Deer? Uh, no. <laughs> Not in Red Deer? Oh, what the heck is the name of the place? I'm trying to think thinking. of the name of the town now, and it just escaped me. Karen, <laughs> you know you're in Elk here. Elk Point. <laughs> Elk Point, okay. She's I know Elk where Point. that is. <laughs> okay. Took me a minute. Uh, so yeah. the center of these flowers is going to get... Um, Something made of venison. I use sa a little bit of saffron yellow. You need nice bright yellow for this. Just this little round section in the center of these orchids. I had um, someone on, I think it was on Instagram, commented that they weren't very realistic looking. I went, well, duh. <laughs> They're not intended to be realistic. So there is the center. So now I've just used a little bit of saffron. Um, ideally, I would put a little bit of white or something down first. Um, so that you're not putting 10 coats of yellow on, but this will do quite nicely. Now, there's a little section, this little pink piece at the the mouth of this orchid. It is also going to get a little float of that berry cobbler. This is a gorgeous tone. It's not quite a pink, not quite a purple. It's just beautiful. So now we have to highlight these petals, and we're going to do that with a little bit of warm white. Now I've switched to a, 
smaller angle here, I'm working with a 3 8 faux squirrel. And I blend my brush out very well. I don't want this white full strength. Come back up here. I'm like a truck driver. I'm constantly turning this thing. And we want that brightest white towards the outside edge of the petals. And then you're going to bring it around till it runs out at the edge right there. A little bit at the top. Remember, keep that whole chisel edge of the brass on your surface. Is there a Schfaltum in the vintage effects? Yes. In the aging, the distressing? Yes, yeah. there is. 98% uh, humidity here in Texas. Ugh. <laughs> Been raining for the last four days. You don't breathe, you swim. Yeah, yeah elk point. That's a great idea. Why do people have to be so critical? If you don't like it, keep scrolling. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I had a, was talking about that fellow on a person on Instagram there that ah. felt the need to tell me that my orchids weren't very realistic. Good for them. I was like, no, they're not. <laughs> orchids are happy with little flowers and pansies. So, and I just royally goofed here, so I'm going to fix that. There we go. My parents fed us pig's brain as children. Not bad, but my kids wouldn't touch it. I will try anything once. Unless the smell makes me gag. Yeah. Then... If yeah. the smell is off, that's not happening. Nope. I'm the same way. Yeah. So I'm just taking down that center vein of that back pedal. I put a float of the white down one side, and then I took a little of that... Um, berry cobbler and I just deepened that shadow a little bit now these don't look finished but watch this I'm going to use my rigger and a little bit of warm white and I thinned it out a little bit so that I can get a nice stroke out of it so this actually finishes these flowers pretty quickly so on either side of that yellow center there is what looks like a comma stroke so I'm going to put that little comma stroke in ah and oh Is my there... gosh i can't paint today oh i think they meant the paint line vintage effects oh no there is not no, there is no asphaltum in that paint line oh, there okay. is a, a nice brown there is a really nice brown in it but it is not asphaltum sorry i didn't know what vintage of... he wasn't familiar with the paint line i didn't realize it was a paint line I know automotive paints. I know those paints. So those little flip overs in the petals that are tucked in behind there, they're just little comma strokes of thinned warm white. That's all they are. And I, for whatever reason, my fingers are stiff today, so I'm having trouble getting a nice stroke. There we go. So those little orchids, they are not difficult to paint. And you can clean them up. Like, I'm going to have to clean this up because this is just pitiful. And I kind of let that line run out a little. So then in this center here, on either side of that, you're going to take a little of that berry cobbler on either your stylus or on a liner brush and we're going to put in a little cluster of dip dots some big some tiny like so and the tiny ones are going to come out a little bit keep the bigger ones towards the center is the camera a little out of focus or is it my eyes you don't want me to answer that question <laughs> I'll zoom in a bit more for you. There you go. So there is our little dip dots. This just gives you a little bit more depth and a little more texture to these cute little pink orchids. And again, we're not looking for supreme realism here. 
Sometimes the autofocus sensor goes a little out of whack. <laughs> so. so that finishes out the lion's share of that orchid. We just have a couple of little things to do. And it helps if she doesn't move it around too much. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. So I'm going to dry that. And this is where my pen comes in. I love my pen for this. I like putting a really light, sketchy line around the orchids, around the edges of the petals. Is that a thing? Is that a... Is that... Don't tell me that's a thing. Is what a thing? Pickled cheese? Yes, it is a thing. Okay. You do you. Man, found something on my list that I haven't tried yet. Pickled cheese. Pickled cheese. Okay. Don't know if I want to try it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just go around these flowers and just give them a very light, sketchy line. Did you get an unexpected package this week to play with? Did I get an unexpected package to play with? Yeah. Mm, no. Are you hinting at something, JJ? <laughs> Should we be expecting something? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, again, I use that pen a lot. I really like that sort of sketchy outline to things. I do the same thing to the vase. So I come down right on the white portion of it, as close to the edge as I can get. And I like this sort of sketchy line on things and I do it on both sides of those white stripes all the way across and this is just my methodology for finishing things out this has a not realistic look about it I like that part of this this is the fun part of this mm -hmm. and it keeps it soft and loose and light and informal and it's fun um, another thing that you could do with something like this is to write things in I don't think I'd want to try pickled cheese mm. I like I said it doesn't sound all that appealing to be it doesn't honest. sound appealing but I'll try it then again fried pickles didn't sound all that appealing either at first but Fri oh, deep fried Oreos God. did not sound appealing I even kind of went, eh, I don't think I should. <laughs> They're sinfully good, though. <laughs> like, they are They're decadent. terrible for you, but they they're so decadent. good. They are decadent. Uh, JJ says, yes. Uh -oh. Tracking says, you got it, or did you toss? Oh, it may... I may not have picked it up. I didn't check the mail yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's probably sitting in it's, the mailbox. It's probably sitting in my mailbox. I just haven't gone down yet. Actually, while you're doing that, I can go check the mailbox. I'll go later. Yeah? I'll do it later. I'll need a leg stretch anyway. So there we have that sketchy line. Something that would be fun for this, I think, would be to... You know, write family names in there, in those areas. I really like the, you know, handwriting tucked into things. Um, makes fun bumblebees to write poetry and whatnot inside the wings. And Rutabagas are delicious. Oh, rutabagas with brown sugar. Yeah. Yeah. That's Roasted what I, That's what I've sugar. tried. Yeah. Uh, where can I order your stencils? Easy. Yeah. TracyMoreau.net. Find all kinds of them. We have tons of the M Square and Tracy Miro stencils. Oh, well, that's the brush guys. What am I on? I don't know. You're looking for me. Oh, I think I switched yours out. <laughs> what? I switched yours out for Sandy's. <laughs> yeah. That's what I did. And mine is easy. It's tracymoreau.net. So we've done an orchid. We've done some fun stuff on this vase. We have to talk about this butterfly. The butterfly is actually so simple, and he's fun to do. We're going to start with that same color that we used on the orchids. I'm using that, that berry cobbler. We're going to put a little shadow right here in close to the body of this butterfly and under the wing. 
It's just a little float. Don't get too worked up over it. Don't even worry about getting it neat or tidy. We just want to get a little of that color close to the body, like so. Okay, I gotta zoom in. Of course, and then I muck it up. There we go. And now we're going to put a highlight on the edge of the wings. We're going to do that with warm white, same as the flowers. We're carrying this color palette all the way around this piece. Rutabaga for the UK would be a... Turnip. Would it be a turnip? Sugar beets. Sugar beets. That's the best way. So I got a little bit of warm white on my brush and I'm just going to put a float just inside the edge of the, the wing, like that, and then I'm going to stop and then put another one. And I'm going to do the same thing here and here. I don't want you know, a nice solid float. I just want this to sort of stop and then there and do the same thing there. And this is just going to create a little bit of texture on the wings. Good. Same thing on this side. I want that little gap. Do you see the little gap where the, that float stops and then starts? I'm going to dry. Comme ça. Uh, the only produce I don't produce I don't like is raw onions. Oh. I love onions. They have their place. They I have will their admit. place, yes. <laughs> they do have their place. For me, raw onion should be freshly cut and put on a burger <laughs> but you can also get away with fried onions put on a burger mm. so get i'm just burnt. stroking the body of this butterfly in with a little bit of lamp black and i'm going to do the same thing for the antenna it's just a little stroke little line like so then i'm going to flip my brush over and i'm going to use the heel of the brush that end of it and I'm going to put three dip dots, one, can't and a smaller that. one. Can't see it. Thank three you. dip dots, one at the top, nice big one, and then two tiny ones like so. Boop, boop. Big dip dot, two tiny ones. And I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom of this wing. One big one. Oops, missed. Didn't have enough paint. There we go. And then two tiny ones. Mm, Bloomin' onions a little much for me. It's... Yeah, I'm not my, not keen. If done right, they're good, but it's a lot of onion flavor. So I'm going to dry this, and then we're going to do the same thing to the butterfly that we did to the flower, and that's use that sketchy pen to add some details to the wings, little lines, what have you. <laughs> Has anyone tried tomato jam? You mean ketchup? <laughs> <laughs> jam. I'm kidding. Tomato jam is delicious, uh, but I wouldn't put it on pork chops. Tomato jam would be good on... Uh, there's a lot of onion in tomato jam, too, isn't there? Mm -hmm. I'm making the onion jam that I use for burgers. Onion jam is delicious. Yeah. I I don't know. I'm not a big fan of ketchup, so that's yeah, you know, a tomato jam. It's, uh, it's different. Know. It's not quite ketchup. Yeah. And it, it is. Would have to be. <laughs> it's reduced heavily. <laughs> I would imagine. Um. What would to tomato jam be good on? Oh. So that butterfly is, then gets just that, that same treatment that I've done with everything, that little sketchy line. Again, I'm, it's not straight, not clean. I just like that irregularities of it. It defines the wings, softens the borders, just gives it a little bit of indistinct detail. Let's call it that. I actually thought about this. Tomato jam on top of a seasoned chicken breast mm -hmm. with a smoked Havarti on top and then baked. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. That 
a lot of flavor profiles. That's a lot of flavor profiles. There would be some onion, tomato, definitely garlic. Uh, salt and pepper for the chicken. Probably that would be a good aromat with the chicken. Yep. So now the only thing that we have left to contend with on this is the vines. And the vines on this piece are pretty straightforward. Um, I'm using matcha green. It's actually not matcha green. It's olive green, but... They're asking about the pen again. The pen? The pen. My pen. My gel pen. I love these things. Uniball Signo. A Uniball Signo 0.38. A couple of good reasons I use them. Um, one, they don't have a Teflon ball. They have a stainless steel ball. So you can really press firmly with them without damaging them. They also work really smoothly on painted surfaces. They don't gum up or jam up, which I really like. Uh, they're ultra fine. You get beautiful line drawings. I use them for tracing and transferring because I get nice fine lines. I don't get those big heavy ones that you do with a, st with a stylus. So that's why I like them. So vines and tendrils, these get a really simple treatment. They are just base coated with a little matcha green or olive green. Whatever you have on hand. A high just, yellow green. You just need a green with a high yellow content. <laughs> Something bright. And they just get a simple base coat with that color. Good on eggs or grilled cheese sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Still got them talking about that tomato, tomato jam. jam. Renee's been following this fellow on, I think it's on TikTok, isn't it? The one that does the vintage recipes. Oh, yeah. And, oh, my gosh. It's TikTok or YouTube? Uh, YouTube. I follow him on YouTube. Yeah. But, oh, but my gosh. But it's his YouTube shorts that he does those. Yeah. But the old vintage recipes that were, you know, from the turn of the century, before <laughs> that. Potato uh, cheesecake? Potato or, cheesecake? Or not potato cheesecake. Potato chocolate cake. Potato chocolate cake. I've had that. I've also had the mulatto. I'd like to try uh, that. The mayonnaise cake. The mayonnaise cake I'd also like to try. <laughs> yeah. It just, I understand the purpose of mayonnaise cake. Yep. It just doesn't sound appealing now. No, it does not sound appealing, but the cake itself is delicious. It's so rich. Uh, she shows the sweet pea, but has not taught it yet. No, the sweet pea piece I'm teaching for um, Pacific the Coast. Pacific Coast painters. Yep. And so that pattern will not be available until after I've taught it for them. I absolutely love this piece. I'm just tickled pink with it. Pardon the expression. Um, what happened to your <laughs> her hand? Age. Age. <laughs> He's pushing his luck today. Yeah. Um, no, it just, I have an ongoing issue, so it just... Flares up from time to time. That one tendril apparently drags her eye through the, the painting. Yeah. As it should. As it should. Except That's its I job. Can't find. Tomato soup cake. Yes, had it. Delicious. Mom makes a delicious one. Um, it just doesn't sound appealing. It doesn't, again, it doesn't sound appealing, <laughs> but it is really good. I'm just trying to locate my piece. This is the sweet pea piece that I'm teaching for Pacific Coast painters. Ah, I fun. love this piece. I gotta zoom out. Absolutely love this piece. And they are the reason that I came up with it. They asked for something with a teacup. And I haven't done sweet peas, and I thought that this would be a lot of fun. And it really was. I had such a great time painting this piece, and I really am happy with the way it turned out. It's a fun piece, but it spawned a whole bunch of other design ideas. And um, technically, this is the this this was the catalyst to this. <laughs> <laughs> so it um, I really have been having just way too much fun um, with this high contrast thing. I wanted to do another teacup, and then something happened, and I found a an image of a vase that was done with black and white checks, and I just loved the checks. And, but I didn't want to do the vase and the checks, and so this is where I ended up. One thing sort of led to another. Oh, when can the rest of us get to paint this? Um, I'm not teaching this until September, so it'll be September, mid-September, early October before the pattern is ready yeah. for y'all. 
So I need a little bit of plantation pine, or in my case, I'm going to use some sap green because I don't have any plantation pine. But I need that color for my, oh crap, where did it go? It escaped. There it is. So I'm using a little bit of sap green. Uh, Kathy Barnett is wondering, uh, I want to paint this with you, with, with you. Please post how I can take it. Yep. I'm guessing she's talking about the Pacific Coast. Yep. Once, uh, once I have that information, I'll be happy to post it. I, when they open it up to uh, people outside of the chapter, yeah. um, I will be happy to post it. I'm excited. It's going to be so much fun painting with them. And I, I just, I love that piece. It's going to be fun to paint. Anxious to do our class on Bird of Paradise Flower? Yeah, that's the 22nd of May. I'm painting with a group from Hawaii. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the one that got they, the big box delivered. They got their big box delivered, I think it was yesterday or Thursday. Yeah. So all their surfaces and their, their stencils and all their goodies have been delivered. Uh, how about Portucilla? What is it? Poor loot. Poor. I can't read today. <laughs> I tried reading an article from Rex Murphy and I nearly. <laughs> His tang is tangled. My tang is tangled, yeah. So I just shaded the vines closest to the flowers and in these curves with a little float of that sap green or plantation pine. You just want to change the tone it's so that it's not a solid color. And then I treat the vines the same way I treat everything else. I just like to add that little sketchy line to it just so that it all comes together. Um. Easy <laughs> easy. Found asphaltum yahoo! You found it on Yahoo? <laughs> Not too many people use Yahoo anymore. There's a lot of people still use Yahoo. I know. Yahoo's the original. Same with Ask Jeeves. <laughs> Ask Jeeves. Yeah. Didn't have Google back in the 90s. We had so, Ask Jeeves and Yahoo. Yeah. So your final treatment for your painted piece is to spatter. I like spatter. I like how it, it sort of softens the overall look of this. I don't want to lay this flat because those are... Still, I guess they're dry. So there is a light spatter over this surface. For two laka. Um, I used two different colors for this. I used a little bit of um, <laughs> asphaltum, obviously. And I also used a little bit of um, white so that I don't, didn't get a harsh spatter. So there's a, a fairly substantial amount of spatter on this but it's very soft and very fine and I used a little of the carbon black or lamp black Portulaca? and a little bit of white. Portulaca? Portulaca. Okay. Portulaca. That. So that is how you do those cute little orchids. They're not difficult to paint. They are a lot of fun to paint and I like how this piece turned out and again this piece relies on that uh, contrast. It's all about the contrast. So those soft pink, bright pink colors against that black, that flash of green against the black, and then the black and white, all those bold stripes. And then I thought it would be fun just to add that busy uh, little check around the outside edge. I just, I love how these look. I think they're a fun, fun um, surface to paint. So its mate is this um, the sunflower piece or these yellow daisies. I love yellow daisies. We call them black-eyed Susans, brown-eyed Susans, whatever you want to call them. I think that this makes a really fun pairing. I It's this check, this black and white check is just fun. And then um, for the vase on this one, I decided I would do just these big polka dots mixed with smaller polka dots. And this one is the random polka dot stencil. Random. I don't know what the number is. It's one of the M square stencils. It's a random. I think it's 51. I think so too. So that's the stencil that I used for the back. The background of this one is done exactly the same way as I did the other one. So 
Um, it's pretty straightforward. So we're going to um, talk about doing these daisies. Now, I'm not going to base coat out this, um, this vase because it's pretty much the same treatment that we gave the other one. The highlights are in the same place. Everything is the same except for the pattern. So it's all about doing that in those polka dots in black on top of that white vase. The treatment for that is exactly the same. I scribble around all of the dots. I scribbled around the outside edge. I do a lot of scribbling. Now we are going to talk about these flowers because they're done slightly differently than the, uh, the orchids. So let's talk about base coating those. I'm going to do this one at the top. Now the daisy in this particular case is going to be done with yellow, but we need to have a white base under it. Otherwise, you're going to be painting yellow till the cows come home, <laughs> trying to get it to cover up that black. So mm -hmm. I like to put a couple of coats of warm white or white gesso. If you want to uh, use gesso, you can certainly do that since I have warm white on my palette. And again, I don't worry about the perfection of these flowers. I'm getting that shape in not worried about a fully opaque base coat. I just want to get that shape. And you'll notice that I pull my strokes always back towards the center. I don't care about the lines. I do not worry about those brush marks. They are going to work in our favor. It's going to save us a little bit of work in the end. But I bring it all the way back to the center of that flower. What was the size of the project board again? Four by six by 14. Six by 14. Yes. Um, the item number is actually in the pattern along with the link to the website. So this could be done on a variety of surfaces. I really liked these framed panels from Cupboard Distributing. Really liked them. They're just such a pretty, neat, I like the longer design element too. So pull that. No, her hand injury is not from beating me. It's tempting. <laughs> Though tempting. And she would probably end up hurting herself. <laughs> no, it's just life. It's nothing serious. It functions. It's just painful. <laughs> Is there a substitute color I can use for berry cobbler? Um, if you cannot find berry cobbler, try razzleberry. There it is. It just, you just need a deep pink or a deep, you know, plum tone or a reddish tone. I just like the color. I look quite like that one. I'm adjusting the camera and I gotta, otherwise we're going to lose the feed completely. And we don't want that. No, we do not. So there's that daisy. I'm almost finished with the base coat. Now you'll notice that I'm always pulling that stroke following the shape of the flower because we're going to make those streaks, those lines, that texture in those petals work in our favor. There's trouble. Deb's here. Deb's here. <laughs> and oh. don't forget guys, if you're looking for stamps, Deb still has that catalog event going on on her website. Although it is closed on the Stampenda site, it is still up on Deb's site. So you've still got a chance to order through the catalog just for the next day. So she's got uh, good pricing and you'll have access to the newest stamps that they have available that are not yet in stores. So take advantage of it. She's got great stamps. And if you aren't part of Deb's uh, Facebook group, oh my God, you got to go check that out. She has got some of the coolest stamp projects on her uh, Facebook group. They're amazing. She's got some fun projects, not to mention she's got great pricing on her stamps. 
And if you're in Canada and you're grumbling about the fact that the pricing is in US dollars, oh, let me tell you something. If you go to a website in the US and you order them, you're going to be paying through the nose for them. Deb can ship direct from Canada. So your postage is going to be a lot less. And her pricing is set up so that you're paying a lot less than you would if you waited and went to a retail store to get them. So even with the exchange rate, you're still getting a deal. So it's awesome. And I'm fortunate that I can get my stamps. I already sent my order in. <laughs> as soon as she told me she had this, this uh, catalog deal going on, I placed an order. <laughs> Because I needed some new stamps and I needed to order stamps for the website. So it was the perfect opportunity to take advantage of that. The ability to order direct right from the catalog. Uh, without having to buy large minimums. So you can order a one of. You don't need to be ordering for, for a, uh, a website. You don't need to order multiples. You can just order a one of. And this is the only chance you're going to get to do that. So if you are looking for stamps, now is the time. So while that daisy is drying, I'm going to put a coat of antique green on the leaves so that we can talk about the leaves. I love my antique green. I think it's my favorite green. So I'm going to put a coat of antique green on here. It'll probably take two coats to get good opacity on that but I'm also going to do the vein, the um, stems on my daisy with that antique green too. Yeah. Ta -da. Love this green. So I'm going to dry that real fast. Now you'll notice that that daisy does not have a fully opaque coverage. It doesn't need it. Uh. It's just giving us a nice bright base for that yellow. So I'll put one more coat of antique green on that leaf and we should be good to go. I need Terry green corn to pick be behind door number one, door number two, or door number three. You're basically picking your prize. Door number one, door number two, or door number three. <laughs> Terry's in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Is she? Yeah. Oh. Terry Greencorn. The Nova Scotians are back in lockdown, so this will be a nice little goodie to get in the mail. So I need a nice pretty yellow for my daisy. I think I'm out of sunny day. Ooh. My sunny day is almost out. I'm hoping I have enough to paint this. Ooh, there we go. Maybe I do. <laughs> There's more in there than I thought. So um, I'm going to put a base coat of sunny day. She chose door number two. Door number two. Woohoo! Terry, you're getting the Be Happy stamp. So that will go out in Monday's mail for you, my dear. I think I already have your address somewhere, but oh, yeah. um, feel free to send it to me again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm putting a base color of that sunny day. Now that sunny day, although it has a fair amount of white in it, is still quite transparent. So that little bit of white underneath makes a huge difference. Even though it's not a fully opaque base coat, it makes a huge difference to how this yellow goes on. Whoa, what happened there? What did I miss? I don't know. Apparently everybody left for a sh split second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got that sunny day. Now remember what I said about making that texture work for you? I'm putting my yellow on the same way that I put that white on. So I'm following the shape of the petal and I'm letting those brush marks remain. 
and this will work in our favor. <laughs> Make it sound like the price is right. Oh. <laughs> Get your animal spayed and neutered. <laughs> What size is the wood? It is a 6 by 14 panel. This one has a frame. So there's my yellow. I love this sunny day. It's such a pretty yellow. You can use lemon yellow if you run don't happen to have it. What's a good color match for matcha green? Olive green, matcha green is, um, you know, in that ballpark. I love matcha green. Really, Dad? <laughs> yes, Dad. Filming. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. What's up? So that yellow is going to cover quite nicely over top of that white. Yeah. I love seeing all of those little thin lines in stria that we got in that base coat. You remember? It's you're seeing all of these little lines in that white. Well, they're going to show through that yellow, and that works in our favor. It creates a little visual texture in those petals. So that's why I don't really panic when it comes to getting an opaque base coat because this works in our favor. It helps create some more visual texture in these flowers. So I'm going to finish out base coating and then I'll dry this real quick. And then this will not take us very long. So the center of this flower I know it'll be a shock to you, but it's a schwaltum. <gasps> what? It is. It's a schwaltum. Oh, okay. The center of the flower. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> oh, excuse me. And I like to take it right up against the edge of those petals. I want that nice defined center. Zoom in a bit on the... Oh, there. There you go. I need Julie Crosby. To pick a door. <laughs> door number one or door number two? Door number one or door number three because door number two is gone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stay on track here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna dry Come on this. down. Yeah. I'm going to dry this real quick. Julie I love this little Eco, man. This thing is just the bee's knees. Hopefully she's still here. Julie Crosby? Yeah, Julie Crosby. Door number one or door number three? <laughs> so we have all our base coats in place. We have our center base coated. And so we're going to uh, do that center <laughs> portion first. Hi, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> You just won a brand new car! <laughs> Are so, you guys just going to feed me game show sentences and I'll go from there? So I'm going to shade the front edge of this daisy with a float of lamp black. Just that leading edge, that part here. And then I'm going to put a little dip in the center of it. <laughs> with just a little float of that lamp black. And then that is it for the center. You're gonna leave it alone for the time being. Now we have to add a little bit of heat to the center of this flower right in here. Gore adjust, yes, love <laughs> this color. So we're going to do that. Now I'm using a little bit of quinacridone gold for this, um, but you can use a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and you're going to thin it out quite a bit to get that rich reddish tone without getting it too dark or too opaque so don't be afraid to thin out that paint a little bit 
but I am using quinacridone gold for this. But burnt sienna will do exactly the same thing. And you're going to shade that area closest to the daisy. Let me move that into the shot so you can see it. So down at the base of the flower, I'm going to put that float in. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. This is not a neat and tidy float. You're going to let that color run out. Remember what I said about those stria, those little lines. You can see them picking up the color because it's holding some of that color. Can I win Renee packaged up? Ah, uh, hey, hey. <laughs> the only way I'm going in a box is it's... <laughs> <laughs> Feet first. <laughs> Feet first. <laughs> I think if we had to ship them anywhere, it would probably go to Georgia because Sandy would be upset if we sent them anywhere but to her. To Georgia? To Georgia. I'd go to Georgia. So that is the shading on these daisy petals is coming right up underneath. It is not, as I said, a neat and tidy float. We want that texture just like so. And then wherever those petals overlap, you're going to put a little float. I'll take what a game show host says for 500. <laughs> 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 so Julie uh, door number one or door number three <laughs> choices 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 <laughs> so there is our shading if you want it a little more intense by all means throw a little bit more in it's not going to hurt <laughs> Renee is now a game show host foodie and all around nice guy <laughs> wow Okay. <laughs> so the <laughs> tips of these petals are going to get a treatment too. So we need to highlight those. And I'm doing that with just a little float of thinned warm white. Door number one. Are you sure? <laughs> Is that your final answer? <laughs> <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> I knew it. So I'm just putting a weak float of that warm white at the tip of these petals just to keep them nice and bright. And it, again, I am not, I don't putz with that too much. I just get a little bit of that color on. Just like so. Keeps things nice and bright and sunny. <laughs> I live at number one. Okay. You are the weakest link. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's the price. Oh, cool. So Julie. Julie gets the uh, the stencil set and one of the Uniball Signos. The stencils are uh, retro and uh, one of the new B stencils. And you're going to get one of those uh, of my favorite Uniball gel pens. So that'll be on its way to you on Monday. There you go. So there is my final highlight on my petals. And now I have to have a little bit of fun with this. Out comes my pen again. <laughs> I'm going to dry this real quick. And we're going to do the same thing to these petals that we did with the orchids. And we're going to outline just a sketchy little scribbly line on the petals of these flowers. Just like so. I Again, I don't worry about them being totally perfect. I'm not concerned with that. Add those... You know, those little lines, those little details, if you choose to. This just helps define them, and it softens them, and they don't look quite so rigid and harsh. And I like the sort of hand-drawn look of it. It's just fun and easy. And then about the only thing that we have left to do to these daisies is to finish out those leaves. And then... Um, do that center portion. Me and my dip dots. I really love my dip dots. <laughs> I don't let, I don't do humidity. No, I don't do humidity either. Hence the, the bracelet here. For me, it just makes my knee hurt. 
it starts to ache. It doesn't feel good. Just makes my everything hurt. <laughs> my everything. <laughs> <laughs> my body. Uh... So there is all of that fun detail on my daisies is just done with that scribbly line and my gel pen. Keep in mind that when you're going to varnish this, make sure you hit this with a couple of coats of matte spray. Because nice. this is a gel. Um, in some places I've had it dry instantly and then never have to worry about it. And other times I've had it where it bleeds and runs if I try to put anything over top of it. So I like to put a coat of matte spray over everything. Uh, the random polka dot stencil is currently available. It's M251. Yep. If you're looking for it. So I'm going to add dip dots to the center of my flowers. I'm going to do that with a little bit of um, asphaltum. You can do that with a liner brush. You can do it with a stylus. Whatever blows your hair back. <laughs> so I'm going to a few dots of asphaltum or lamp black. Either one will work. <laughs> There's Kitty Grant. Thank you, Tracy, Renee, and Bob. Hope everyone has a good weekend ahead. So I use those little dip dots. Make sure you come out onto the petals a little bit. It keeps the centers looking nice and airy. And then you're going to rinse your brush and you're going to repeat that with a little bit of warm white. <laughs> and this adds your highlights. Now I'm a bit more selective about placement with the white ones. And I also like to make sure that those go out onto the, the petals as well. Just gives this a softer look. Doesn't look so harsh. Is it Sprouse? Linda Sprouse? Sprouse. Linda Sprouse. Linda Sprouse. Take a wild guess what I'm going to ask. You want door number three? <laughs> Do you want door number three or are you going to pass? Oh. <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. So there is the center for our daisy. The only thing we have left to do is that leaf. Uno leafo? I'm just going to do the one. Just do the one? So I have it base coated with um, antique green, which is my favorite green. I use it a lot. Anybody that paints my stuff knows I use it a lot. And I'm going to shade the base of the leaf just along that bottom with some plantation pine or black green or evergreen whatever color you have on hand it's just you just need nice dark green and i'm going to shade under my flower on the stem and where it overlaps what? i don't know how to respond to that julie crosby says the cost of shipping to the uk is outrageous i love winning but it's not fair to pay that much shipping please pull another winner oh my goodness Ah, uh, you know, by doing that, we'd have to send you something anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just because of your... Um... Quite honestly, Julie, what we're shipping you is very small, very compact, and fortunately will go letter mail. Yeah. Um, the cost is really not that high, so we are more than happy to send you your price. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually and, ship to the UK as well. And we do well. ship to the UK on a regular basis. We do have some wonderful customers there, so... Yes, absolutely. You will get your prize. <laughs> but that's, uh, I can't think of the word. It's generous. It's generous. And, yeah. and thoughtful, and but thoughtful. honestly, no. no. We're going to make sure that you get your goodies. Yeah. You want them we fair and square. We ship to Australia as well, so yeah. we're prepared for that. So I have shaded down the center vein of this leaf with <gasps> that same plantation pine that same sap green that nice dark rich green because we want a nice shadow down there and then we're going to highlight it with a little bit of matcha green or um, olive green whichever bright green you have on hand and I again I don't use these colors full strength so I have blended this out quite a bit and I'm going to put a float of that color on the tip of the leaf all the way out to the tip down that edge and I'm going to pull it down the point opposite that shadow so I'm going to pull that highlight right down there until it runs out 
and then I'm going to have a little bit of it on the opposite side as well so that I have that nice I want that separation that dip in this middle of the leaf to be accentuated so there it is and I'm on the stem I'm going to pull a little of that thinned olive green Miss Linda Sprouse Miss Linda Sprouse gets this gorgeous little surface from Southern Ridge Trading Yay. So, Linda I think we have your name in our server as well so we will take care of that and have that out to you on Monday and I'm going to check that inventory number because people are saying that the random polka dots isn't available. Oh, there's still some there. Oh, and nice. it just may need to be updated. Just give us a second. So to finish off that leaf, I thin out my matcha green. And then with a liner brush or a rigger, you just need something with a fine line. I like to put just this loose little detail line around the outside edge like so. And I like a little curly cue on the tips of my leaves. Oh, and right. that is how you do those daisies. I mean, they're pretty straightforward. They're very simple. There is nothing complex in this design, quite honestly. Um, it relies very heavily on contrast. And I, and I kept the design as basic and as simple as possible when it comes to the various elements in it. So there's nothing too terribly elaborate in this. It is a great beginner piece. I think it, they can have tremendous success with this one because it's really not a difficult one to paint. So that is the only element we didn't cover was that little bumblebee, but that's okay. We've done bumblebees so much. I'm pretty sure we can manage he is again painted very simply um, he's base coated with the black the wings with the white uh, we used a little bit of uh, bahama blue for the wings that sunny day yellow and uh, a little bit of that um, quinacridone gold or burnt sienna to add a little punch of light to our bumblebee and again treated him the same way i treated the butterfly we went around him with that little gel pen so that is it uh, for these two pieces. Again, not a difficult paint and a lot of fun. I just switched the inventory numbers to actually show that we have some of the random polka dots. So yep. there's only eight left. So yeah. First come, first serve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much throwing a steak into a piranha pool right now. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh, switching cameras. Right. Switching cameras. That's there, a good there, idea. There. Thank there. you. Okay, guys. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was a little abbreviated, but we had a lot to cover on these two pieces uh, for today. But uh, I think we covered enough that you could successfully uh, get through both pieces without too many issues. And as always, if you have any questions or concerns, um, all you have to do is hit that little speech bubble on the front page of my website. Click on that and your questions will come directly to me so I'm able to answer them as quickly as I possibly can. And I'm more than happy to answer questions, so feel free to do that at any time. We're getting really close to the 5,000 mark. Are we? Yeah. Cool. So, so share it with friends, family, whoever. Yeah, get them to hit if that subscribe button. If you have an audience, button. give us a shout out if you could. Yeah, we You don't have it. to. Yep. You're not obligated to. We are aiming for that 5,000 mark. It's a bit of a milestone yeah. uh, on YouTube for us to get that 5,000 mark. And there may be something coming in the future. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. We've Maybe. Got a, we've got something in the works. Yeah. So. Um, and we and need I'm, that 5,000 in, in order to maintain it. We need the 5,000 in order to maintain it. So um, YouTube has all kinds of um, rules and regulations about how things are done. And... Um, you can only do things once you hit certain milestones and with the 5,000 mark that's another milestone for us and then we would be able to do even more and offer more which is yeah. kind of what we're looking to do is to be able to offer more uh, than just the one live a week so yeah. and in order to do it that it means we need, more for you guys it means more for you guys so um we got really excited once we realized what all we could do with that so yeah. Wait till we hit 10,000. So more. I'm, I'm really Even hoping more. we can hit the 5,000 mark. <laughs> yeah. um, the other thing is we have an anniversary coming up. 
in we June. Do. Yes, in yeah, June. Yeah, in June. We have an anniversary coming up. We've been doing these lives for a full year on June 17th. Yeah. This this makes video number 61. 61. That's incredible. On so, the YouTube channel. On the YouTube channel. I'm so excited. Anyway, so we're kind of planning something extra uh, for June sometimes so that we have something fun. I'm kind of hoping our sponsors are going to get on board because we've been really fortunate. Dynasty and Decawart, yeah. they have all been amazing. Uh, so has Southern Ridge Trading and Stampendous has been amazing. All of these companies have just been, uh, have really stepped up to the mark to make sure that we have goodies to give away every week. What's the discount code? For? For? <laughs> for my website? For her website? Yeah. You have to look for it. It's on the front oh, page now, of the website. Okay, now you're keeping it a secret. <laughs> no. I'm Yet not. you told them right at the beginning of the video. I did. No. <laughs> the coupon code is stay safe. Yes. Stay yeah. safe. All one word. Stay safe. Because uh, that's most important right now. Um, Terry Greencorn was one of our winners today. Uh, Terry, we've been thinking about you. Um, I know that things are really um, difficult uh, in uh, Nova Scotia right now with all of the lockdowns and. Uh, it can be pretty worrying. We understand that. So we've been thinking about you. So please keep, you know, stay safe. <laughs> we want you to be back painting. <laughs> um, and uh, we have friends in the Ottawa area in Ontario that are all... Winnipeg, know, Alberta, and Winnipeg, BC. Winnipeg, Alberta, and in British Columbia. They're, um, there's all a lot of spike in cases across the country. So, um, you know, we're thinking about you. Keeping our fingers crossed that everybody stays safe and well. Um, we have our own little outbreak here on the East Coast in New Brunswick. Um, not as severe as some places, obviously, but... Um, <laughs> Can't wait for the zombie cookies. <laughs> so, uh, our thoughts and our prayers are with everybody that's having to put up with this. And we're all, I hate to say it, in the same boat. We're not in the same boat, but uh, we're all dealing with similar issues. So, Yacht in a canoe. We're not in a canoe. <laughs> with no paddle. Yeah. <laughs> A certain creek, if you will. Uh, yeah, a certain creek, if we will. So that, guys, is it for this week. Um, I really appreciate you coming around. I know it was last minute. I know that you kind of had to scramble if you wanted to get supplies and, and whatnot. So I appreciate your patience. Um, next weekend, we are. I am teaching in the morning, but yes, we are going live a little later in the afternoon. Uh, but we'll post the time for you so you'll know. And um, so we've got all kinds of fun stuff plotted and planned for next oh, yeah. weekend we're painting zombie cookies painting zombie cookies <laughs> so, and if you're looking for the surface for the zombie cookies that is with sheila landry she's going to be upset with me <laughs> <laughs> i'm warning you now sheila uh, the surface is available on sheila landry's website pattern will be up at the beginning of the week hopefully monday I am teaching tomorrow, and then Tuesday or Wednesday, the pattern for Oleander Tea will be available as well. Uh-oh. So. Show that one. Oh, yeah. Some people haven't seen Oleander Tea. So I am teaching this one tomorrow. Face for camera, Mom. Face camera, right. No, well, I was looking at it. Oh. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm an idiot. She's an idiot. We're all idiots. <laughs> So this is the piece I'm teaching tomorrow for SDP Academy and the Decorate Retreat, the Decorate event. Um, I love this piece. I, it was fun to paint. Uh, completely different, but the pattern will be available next week as well. And what else? Zombie cookies. Zombie cookies. Yeah, zombie cookies. Uh, I need ink so I can print these patterns. <laughs> so zombie cookies next Saturday. We'll post the timing. It is going to be a little later than usual, but we will post the timing for this class next week. Uh, can you quickly tell me the name of the gel pen? The gel pen is a Uniball Signo 3.8. 38. 0.38. So, yeah. It's a Japanese yeah. ink. Nice and black. Nice black. All right. <laughs> Are we done? I think we're done. Okay. All right, guys. Don't forget, um, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button. Uh, we need all the likes and the subscribes and the new members that we can get in order to move on to the next step. And we're excited about that because it means a lot more stuff for us to do with you guys. And uh, what else? Check out Sandy's website for the... Sandy um, McTeer. Yeah, for the this. The this. The this. Sandy's got these on her website. Same with the little brayers that I use for stamping. You'll find them on Sandy's website. If you're looking for stamps, don't forget, go and visit paintingwithdead.com. If you want to get it, uh, take advantage of that 
catalog sale for Stan Pendis. And Sheila check out, oh yeah, the Sheila surface Landry. for next weekend is available for, from Sheila Landry at tollpaintingdesigns.com. And uh, stencils, and I've got stamps on my website and some all sorts of fun surfaces and God knows what else. And then, oh, and my pens. <laughs> <laughs> you went cross-eyed. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you can check that out on my website at tracymoreau.net. And I think I have talked about everybody I was supposed to today. <laughs> yeah, I think you're good. I think I'm good. All right, guys, I love you. Please stay safe. We'll see you again next week. Mwah.